Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone watching. I'm your host, The Report of the Week. Well, the other day I took a uh, flight with one of America's low-cost airlines, Allegiant Air. Now, usually I fly with JetBlue, but I wanted to give them a try, and I decided, you know, I'm gonna film, take a few pictures of uh, what I saw, you know, how the flight was, and make a video talking about it. I know everyone wants to see the food stuff, but I want to have some fun of this one, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Alright, so my apologies for the, uh, the audio, but it, it, this is an acquired taste. Just, just let the dulcet tones and uh, the uh, low fidelity overtake you. You know, let, let all the negatives flow out and, uh, and, and, and so on and so forth. So the thing to remember about Allegiant Airlines is that you will get the most basic of accommodations. The best way to look at Allegiant Airlines is like a glorified bus. And I say that not with any insult, but I say that completely truthfully. It is there to get you from point A to point B in a swift manner, and that's it. No frills, no luxuries. It's just if you need to get from one destination to the next, and you want to do so in a timely manner, that's what they are there for. And as you can see with the pictures that have been going by with the seat, it isn't the roomiest seat. It's not the cleanest plane in the world. It doesn't have any fancy console. It doesn't have any, uh, you know, any excess comforts, so to say, that maybe other airlines might have. It has a seat. If you bought the ticket, that seat has your name on it, metaphorically, and they're just going to get from point A to point B, and that's all that there is to it. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, let's, let's finish watching this takeoff sequence. So we're in flight, and uh, you can see it, it was, I mean, obviously the plane didn't combust, it didn't fall apart. The one thing that I did notice in regards to the takeoff and the landing, and I, I filmed both of those things, it was not the smoothest, so to speak. Like sometimes I'll, I'll fly with other airlines, and the takeoff doesn't really have a lot of bumps and the landing doesn't have a lot of bumps, and it's just pretty smooth. This, on the other hand, everything was kind of shaking and uh, rattling and very bumpy, but I, I, I say, well, why worry about it? I mean, what, what control have I over the situation? None. It's an older plane. It's going to be a little more rattly, so to speak, than some of their newer planes. So that's just something to keep in mind. You're going to have a little more turbulence in the flight than you would with other airlines. And it is literally, like I said, you're riding a bus. You're going to have those bumps in the road, so to speak. That's just part of, that's just part of what it is. And if you realize that, and you kind of get in that mindset that instead of going on a plane ride, it's just going to be like a bus trip, it, it gets you in that zone that you know exactly what to anticipate what to expect, and it makes it all the much easier. Because if you go in there with your expectations through the roof and you expect it to be clean and with Wi-Fi and entertainment and free everything, then you're going to be really let down. But if you just look at it from that perspective, that it is like a bus trip, but faster, then it's exactly what you expected, and that's all that there is to it. 
Like I was saying, though, there really aren't any amenities. Of course, there is a bathroom, so you'll be able to relieve yourself if necessary. Uh, but otherwise, on the back of the seat, of course, no console, no Wi-Fi, no television, no audio. You are allowed to use electronic devices, uh, but if you bring your phone or your computer, just download some music or a movie or, or hey, my VORW radio show, right? Or uh, anything to your heart's content. Download that in advance to kill some time on the flight. Uh, otherwise, you know, just make make the most of it. There won't be too much to do. And uh, the only thing that they do have to offer, and I took a picture of it, they have a magazine in the back of the uh, seat there. And at the back of the magazine, they have a little menu. And they'll come around with a, a cart for some refreshments, but everything costs money. Uh, if you want a soft drink, you want a cup of water, or if the flight is really that bad, you know, and you want to just booze it up to try to take a, take a little bit of the edge off, you will have to pay for it. And just keep this in mind, they're going to go around once with the cart, and they don't really make a big deal out of it, so you're just going to really have to try and get, get the uh, employee's attention, and then you'll end up, you know, you'll pay for it with a credit card. But you can see that's the menu and very, very limited choices. But that's something if you really need it to help kind of make it through, uh, that's what we got. But otherwise, I mean, the seat was standard, wasn't the most comfortable in the world, didn't really recline at all. It was difficult, you know, you wouldn't be able to sleep unless you were exhausted. Uh, the, the plane kind of, it smelled like McDonald's, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It, it's, it smelled like fast food in the plane. That's what it smelled like the entire time. Uh, the air temperature in the aircraft was uh, cooler. I was wearing my long, heavy overcoat that kind of goes down to, to my knees, so it's a long, a long coat that you really wear in the winter. And I just had it buttoned up the entire time, and uh, I was not too hot at all. So keep in mind, the air temperature in the flight might be a bit cold. Of course you have the options above your head, but you know, you might be able to adjust them, but that may not, it may take the direct breeze off of you, but it may not reduce the overall temperature, of course, in the plane. So with that, let's just go into the landing, and uh, then I'll see you again on video, and we'll just discuss, well, is it worth it? Stay tuned. Yeah. This may not have been the most detailed video in the world, and I try not to go overboard because I want to respect the privacy of the people next to me. It was a very full flight. I, I didn't want to be filming them. You know, it's, that's just how I am. Probably the video would have been better if, if you know, I was more intrusive, so to speak. Uh, but nonetheless, what are my final thoughts on Allegiant Airlines? Well, normally the price for one of their flights uh, it's usually inexpensive. It's usually anywhere between 30 and $70. Though, during peak travel times, their flights can be as much as $300. Now, keeping that in mind, it's a low-cost airline, and I would recommend that you go with them if you want to get to your destination, especially if it's a smaller, more regional airport, if you have bad anxiety, you don't want to deal with the huge major international airports. But if you want to go from one regional airport in the U.S. to another, where there's fewer people, less crowds, and less stress, or you want to get from one place to another to save some money, I would recommend going with Allegiant Airlines and uh, giving them a try. Now just remember, it might not be the prettiest flight in the world, it may not have the most accommodations, but it will get you to your destination safe and sound and in one piece.
as it did me. Again, it's a no-frills airline, but it'll, it'll save you some money, perhaps, and I like how it works out of the smaller airports. I just wish their baggage policy was a little better, where they charge for carry-ons. Personal item is free, uh, but carry-ons and checked bags do cost a bit, so that's, you know, that's the one thing, but every airline is starting to do that now. I guess they need the money. That's all that I have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you can check out my radio show, soundcloud.com slash v-o-r-w underscore radio underscore i-n-t. That's all that I have for you. Thank you for watching. Take care. I'm your host, the Report of the Week.